Primatica kept growing by an average of 34% month by month, even during the pandemic, all while being a fully remote company without an office. Hello, hello. Can everybody see me? Thank you for joining us, Robbie. Thank you. Thank you guys for attending this, uh, this lecture. Uh, in this lecture, I'm basically going to explain to you uh, what are the, the secrets and the tools that I've used to scale up my company uh, at a very high rate, exponentially, basically, uh, even during the pandemic. So it's, uh, it's, our company is called Primatica. Uh, we're a B2B automation company, and uh, we're a completely remote company. We've built everything just in the last eight months. So literally, we got started during COVID. And uh, I'm going to teach you in here some of the principles uh, that are going to help you, whether you're a salesperson, whether you're in marketing, whether you're a business owner, uh, I'm going to show you how to make a lot of money, uh, make a big impact and really revolutionize your life. Uh, even if you're not in, in any of these, not in sales, not in marketing and not a business owner, I'm going to teach you here different skills and mindsets that are going to help you improve your life. Again, if you're a teacher uh, or any kind of person, uh, any kind of business uh, or, or, or job, this is going to change your life. So first of all, uh, I'd like to tell you a bit more about me. So again, my name is Robbie. I'm the co-owner of Primatica. I am 27 years old and I'm a husband and father. Uh, basically, I have a, a one-year-old baby at this point um, and hoping hopefully more in the future. Uh, I've invested personally over $45,000 in mentors throughout my life. So I took risks from a very, very young age because of my journey to uh, become successful. And uh, one, one second, sorry. Okay, and and here's this, the, the bad thing. So I actually failed in many, many businesses. Uh, I've owned and, and managed about eight different businesses uh, since age 17. And all of them were failures. All of them either did not start well and just failed in the first month. I quit on. Uh, they they got bankrupt. They they grew a bit and then they failed. Uh, so I have a very impressive list of failures behind me, uh, which is going to be very relevant because of what I'm going to explain to you later. So uh, what I want to emphasize in this conversation, because I'm going to show you some pretty impressive things, is I'm not terribly smart. I'm a terrible manager. I'm not organized at all, and I don't have very high discipline. So. And also one thing that I didn't include here, I'm not a very positive person either. So uh, whatever you've been told about, you know, be positive, uh, uh, think everything is gonna be good. Uh, you need to improve yourself. You need to have self-discipline. All of those things, they're good. They can definitely help you. I can tell you that I did not achieve any of those. So uh, these are not qualities that I can uh, attribute to myself, but still I managed to build a company that's almost making seven figures at this point uh, within less than a year. And I'm gonna explain exactly how I did it. Now, what are the good qualities about me? What what can I say about myself that that is actually good? Let me, uh, by the way, can you guys see me or can you only see the screen? You can only see, you can only see the screen, right? We see you on the screen. Oh, perfect. Okay, good. I thought you only see the screen. Thank you so much. But you are smaller than the screen. That's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a very large person in real life as well, so that's fine. Uh, okay, so the good things about me, three three good qualities that I've had since I was very young. And and these are not qualities that I've had to work for. Uh, again, I'm really trying to, to, to tell you who I am so you understand where I'm coming from with what I'm going to show you. Uh, I've always been an autodeduct. So an autodeduct is somebody who's very good at teaching themselves. I've not, I, I've never been good at school. I've always skipped school because I would always teach myself things. So when I wanted to learn programming, I went to Google, I got a few courses, I watched some YouTube videos, I learned programming. When I wanted to learn marketing, I did, I, I basically went to Google, searched for how to be a better marketer and learned that. Uh, same thing with sales, same thing with almost anything I've done in my life. Anytime I've had a problem, I've Googled it and found the solution. So that's the first good thing about me that I, I was I, I had from a very young age. Second thing is that I've always been a big, big dreamer. So I've always had very big ambitions for what I wanted to achieve in my life. And, and that just, no matter what, even good times, bad times, when I was happy, when I was depressed, I've always been, have had very big dreams and very big ambitions. And I'm sure that a lot of you do also have very big ambitions, whether 
you you're conscious of them and you consciously know that you want to achieve very big things in your life or whether they're unconscious and you, you're not really, you know that they're there, but you kind of hid them away and try to be more realistic. And finally, I'm relentless. So no matter how many times I failed, no matter, no matter how many times things went badly, I've always tried again and again and again and again and again. And it doesn't always look pretty. It doesn't always come out well, uh, but I've always tried again. And, and giving up was just never an option for me. Sometimes I would give up for a month or a few months or half a year, but I, I never looked at giving up as an, in, as, as an absolute thing. I've never honestly stopped. I've always kept trying, sometimes stopping for a moment, but I've always tried again and again and again. So these are the three qualities I can tell you about me. And uh, just to show you an example of one of my biggest failures. So basically you can see this, uh, this uh, hall right here. I've basically spent uh, about $15,000 trying to have a lecture with uh, a few thousand people in it uh, and ended up only getting around 100 people to come to the lecture. So basically uh, what you're seeing here, the only the first two or three rows were full. So imagine uh, putting $15,000 and dreaming big and thinking I'm going to fill this audience and it's going to be amazing and only having like two or three rows of people uh, in there. So uh, just as an example to, to show you kind of visually uh, the kind of stuff that I like to go th for and the kind of uh, risks and failures that I've taken in my life. Now, let me tell you a bit more about my company and then we'll actually get into the, the, the different teaching and, and I also show you the kind of results that we've generated. So uh, my company is, is Primatica. We're the most effective B2B marketing automation service on the planet. The company basically exists for only eight months. Uh, we've had the idea uh, for about 10 months, we started it eight months ago. We had our first sale about six months ago. And uh, now we're at, we're at the point that we're at, and I'm going to explain more about that. Uh, it's 100% remote. So the company uh, never had a, a big office. We only, me and my partner, had a small room that we've rented. Uh, we have uh, 27 employees. All of them are, are from all around the world. So we have employees from the United States, Canada, Romania, Bulgaria, Philippines, India, any, any country around the world, we probably hired or fired somebody from there. Uh, and it's 100% bootstrapped. So if anybody doesn't know, bootstrapped means that the company never got an investment, uh, started off with basically zero money and had to grow internally using sales. So that's why it's re very relevant if you're in sales, marketing, or a business owner. We're currently working with 104 clients. So at this point in the company's development, we have 104 clients. Uh, we charge on average anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 a month. Uh, and uh, it changes. Some clients, uh, we work with them full-time. Some clients, we do paused or special services. Uh, but that's where we're at right now. Uh, we The company works without me and my partner. So basically, uh, one very important thing is me and my partner can basically take uh, right now a vacation for two or three weeks. And the company would just continue working. Everything would be good. It's going to continue working and growing. So I'm basically telling you in, in eight months, we've managed to develop a, a system from zero, basically with hire developers and create a system from zero that, that we use to generate results for our clients, uh, get more than hundred clients, hire and keep uh, more than two dozen employees uh, and, uh, and do it all in a way that's basically sustainable where we don't even have to work. And also, uh, we've recently started looking into investments. Uh, just last week, we started uh, kind of searching around for people who would be interested in investing. And at this point, just a week later, we already have several people interested in investing in us, anywhere from 100000 to $2 million. So what I'm showing you, everything was done in eight months. And I'm going to explain, explain exactly how we've done it. And again, I wanted to, to be clear when I showed you the slide earlier, the point here was to show you, I'm not a good manager. I'm not organized. I'm not disciplined. I'm not a positive person. Uh, so, and I failed a lot. I, I, I lost hundreds of thousands of dollars of dollars in my life. So, so it's not, so, I'm not a special guy. I'm not super smart. It, it's, it's just doing the right things. Um, so here I'm going to show you a bit about our revenue. Now, this is what I can show you. Uh, basically, the company it started around March. We had our first sale. And if anybody else uh, remembers what happened in March, what happened in March was the COVID thing started. So around January, February, people talked about it. Around March, we started having the lockdowns. So this company literally grew from zero 
uh, during the pandemic. And uh, the, the growth you're seeing here, uh, these are estimate numbers. These are not exact to the dollar, uh, but it shows you a very accurate way of how our company uh, grew over the months. So as you can see, it's an exponential growth. Uh, this month, we're projected to make even more money, around seventy-five dollars to $80,000, because the growth is actually accelerating. Uh, and it's only going to accelerate more and more as we build the systems and make things work better. Uh, in this time, by the way, the only salespeople in the company were me and another guy that helped me with sales. So all of this revenue was generated through my sales, as well as somebody who helped me a bit. So uh, this, this is just to show you what we've done financially. Again, very transparent. Uh, if, if you think these numbers are impressive, fantastic. If you think they're not, also great. There's a lot for you to, to, to learn and, 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 and uh, get value here. So I'm going to teach you seven tools uh, that we've used to, to do this, how we've managed to create this massive growth. And again, I'm giving you very bold claims here. You guys feel, can feel free to check up on me, uh, you know, three months from now, six months from now, a year from now and say, you know, hey, Robbie, wh where is the company at right now? And I guarantee you it's going to continue growing exponentially because when you can do the right things, when you know the right formula and you just repeat it again and again and again at different levels, then the growth is natural. Uh, so I'm going to show you here seven tools. Okay. The first one being mindset. So how to have the right mindset to do this in the first place. The second one is about promotion and marketing. Third one is how to maximize your sales. Fourth one is how to optimize and target properly the right people with the right offer. The, the next one is partnerships, how to set up the right partnerships to set you up for success. The number six is building systems that are going to make everything more efficient and make scaling and growing natural. And finally, the, the holy grail, uh, hiring, and why hiring is, is literally the most important thing you can do in your company, why it might be even more important than income. Um, by the way, Dennis, uh, I, I'm not monitoring my time. So uh, again, there are seven principles. If for any reason you see I'm going too slow or too fast, uh, feel free to let me know so I can, uh, so I can adjust. So number one. Uh, you got to have the right mindset, okay? The first tool, the, the most important tool to start with uh, that we've used to make this growth is that we've always had uh, the right mindset from day one. Again, me and my partner came into this with a lot of experience, not a lot of successes, but a lot of experience. So we've already kind of known what the right mindset is that it's going to create, that is going to create success. And if you got the right mindset, you're already there. You already have most of your success done for you. Uh, so I'm going to just outline a few important principles. Make sure you write these down. Make sure you, you, you really, really think about these because each one of these principles alone could completely change your life and, and definitely changed mine. So first one is that enthusiasm is contagious. So you're seeing me speak. You're seeing how I talk right now. Uh, I'm not 10 out of 10 in enthusiasm. I think I'm like 7 or 8 out of 10 right now. Uh, maybe you think more. Maybe you think less. Uh, I know for me, I'm an introvert. Okay, I'm a shy guy. I don't like to talk to people. I'm very much, I, my, my best place to be is alone with myself, either in front of the computer or just walking and writing things down on my phone. Uh, but uh, whenever I'm in this kind of situation, whether it's a sales call, whether I'm talking to my team, I always make sure to extrovert myself, to be enthusiastic, to have higher energy than anybody around me because enthusiasm is contagious. Even if you're not charismatic, even if you're not very confident, just being enthusiastic is going to help you get a lot of attention and get the right people to invest in your ideas. Next up is I'm always fully committed. So I may be wrong, but I'm never in doubt. This is a lesson that I've learned from a mentor that I spent $30,000 just to, just to get this one lesson is even if you're wrong, you, you never want to be in doubt. You always want to project confidence. You always want to show people that you're confident, that you know what you're doing. Uh, whenever I, I, we hire salespeople or we talk to people that want to interview with us, uh, or want us to help them with sales, the first thing that I notice is they're just not very confident. When they talk, it's just very clear, very visible in the way that they communicate that they don't believe in what they say. They don't believe in what they do. Uh, so they say a lot of ums and I'm not sure and let me think about it. It's very important. I mean, I've just had a sales call like literally in, like half an hour ago with a guy who wants to sign up five companies to work with us. And he asked me a lot of questions and everything he asked me, the answer is yes, absolutely. We can do that. We'll get it done. I'm confident we can get you the results. I guarantee you this is going to work. We're going to do everything it's, it takes. We're going to take care of you. At some point, he asked me so many questions. I just told him, look, the answer is probably going to be yes. He says, I have a few questions. I say, whatever it is, it's probably going to be yes. 
uh, it's very, very important that you put yourself in this mindset where you just come at the client with so much enthusiasm and, 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 and confidence. And you're just, yes, sure, absolutely. You're right. I have no doubt about it. I'm confident about it. We'll get it done. Make sure to project that. When you can project that, people will literally do anything for you. Okay, there's about 60, 70% of people with certain types of personality where if you talk like that, it doesn't matter what you're selling. It doesn't matter how much it costs. Just the fact that you're talking like that is going to make them want to join you because they're attracted to that kind of energy. Okay, next up is the can't lose mentality. Do always remember that no matter what happens in life, you cannot lose unless you die. <laughs> I know this is a tough message, but, but it's also very positive. Okay. Think of Nelson Mandela. If you guys don't know him, uh, Nelson Mandela is one of the most influential people in the world. The guy got locked in jail for 27 years. He tried to help release Africa from the apartheid. He got in jail for 27 years. He came out, he became the president of Africa, and he changed the world, okay? No matter what happens, no matter how much you failed, no matter how bad it is, you cannot lose. There is no ending because you can always try again. You can always have another idea, another business, another sales call. So no matter how good or things or bad things get, remember, you cannot lose. As long as you're alive, you can always try again. As long as I can use my mouth to talk and use my hands to write or, 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 or sign the commitments, I can always try again. Next up, find the hidden 99%. So in life, uh, what happens is we only have a very small picture of reality. We have 0.0001% of reality that we notice. And we tend to ignore the other, the rest of reality. So we think what I'm seeing, that's reality. That's the way it is, you know? And and it's a very bad attitude to have because if Bill Gates was in your, in your situation, he would look at your life very differently. Or if your hero, you know, whatever, whoever you admire, if they would be in your head right now, they would look at life completely differently. Whatever problems you have, they probably don't even notice them. So always remember that whatever situation there is, it, no matter how sure you are that this is the situation, these are the options I have, remember that there's an extra 99.9% .9 that you're not even aware of, that you don't even know exists. Uh, and, and you need to start paying attention to it. You need to start asking yourself, what am I not noticing? What questions am I not asking myself? And that leads me to the next one, which is to avoid the attention grabbers. So almost anything in life that's going to try to get your attention is the wrong thing. In life, a lot of things are going to try to get your attention, meaning that uh, uh, different people, messages, notifications, situations, bills, these things are going to tell you, notice me, notice me. I'm so important. You have to notice me. These are usually the wrong thing. 99% of the time, you should not be paying attention to them because these are not the things that are going to move you forward. So whenever something tries to grab your attention, ask yourself, what am I not paying attention to? How can I refocus so I can focus on my dreams? Because remember, if you can achieve your dreams, if you can accomplish your goals, that usually solves everything. So your bills, your arguments with your husband or your wife, that notification, getting more likes, whatever you want to get in life, whatever problems you have. Remember, if you just get, make your goals happen, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, it's going to disappear. Whatever problems you have, you're going to get to a higher level of problems. Uh, next up, the quality of your life is the quality of the questions you ask. So who here has asked themselves today, how can I make 10 times as much money next month as I did this month? Or how can I make tomorrow the best day I've ever had? Or how can I think, what ideas can I think of right now that are going to absolutely change my life? Or a question like, what is my biggest passion in life? Or what am I not paying attention to right now that if I do, it would change my life? Or what is the best business I can start today that would not take up more of my time? Or what is my next million dollar idea? Or what am I so happy and grateful about? you need to ask more quality questions. Your quality of life is determined by the quality of questions you ask. And if your life sucks, if your life is full of negativity and problems, it means you're asking the wrong questions. You're focusing your questions on how do I solve this problem? Can it, get be can it ever get better? Is it gonna get better? The questions you ask yourself are gonna determine 
how your life is going to look like. So start asking high quality questions and ask them again and again and again and again. What do I care about? What do I love? What makes me happy? Uh, what will I do anything for? Okay. What am I willing to suffer to, to achieve in my life? What am I willing to do anything to make it happen? What is the next million dollar idea that's just hiding in my brain? Again, just ask those high quality questions. It's going to change your life. Finally, infinite amount of attempts. Go all in. Basically, in life, you have an infinite amount of attempts. As I said in the can't lose in the earlier part of it, the can't lose mentality, you cannot lose until you die. So you can always try again. You can try again 10 times today. You can try picking up the phone right now and making a sales call. You can open up a new business today. You can always try again, no matter how good or bad things are. You can always try again and again and again and again and again. And nobody limits you. Nobody's giving you a limit. There's no limit to how many emails you can send, how many sales calls you can do, how many people you can call, how many partners you can find, how many businesses you can start. You can always try again and again and again and again and again. So why not try as many times as possible and always go all in? Because imagine if you played poker and you had an infinite amount of chips, you cannot lose. You can always replenish your chips. So you would always go all in. You'd always say, hey, here's all my chips. Let's bet on it because I don't care. I can always try again and bet all in again. So that's the mindset part, okay? You get this right, 80, 90% of the battle is already won, okay? You do this, any goal you have in life, you're probably going to accomplish or going to get very close to it, okay? So write these down, make sure you adopt them. And again, you, you can have a recording of these, uh, these, uh, this presentation uh, when it's done. Ask Dennis about it. I'm not sure about the logistics, but you're going to get this presentation. Now, you're going to notice that the tools that I created here, I call all of them tool number one. Because what happens when you go from one to seven, then in our brains, we start to think number two is less important than number one. Number three is less important than number two. So all the tools I'm going to show you are going to be tool number one. Because if you even apply just one of the tools here, it's going to change your life. If you're going to change them all together, I can even tell you how amazing your life is going to get. Okay. So sales, you have to create confidence in your sales. Most people, when they sell, it just sucks. There's no enthusiasm. There's no passion behind it. There's no excitement. And you're not confident in what you're selling. You need to make your offer so good that it's really hard to say no to. <laughs> Whenever I sell to somebody and they say, I have to think about it, I say, fantastic. Because the more you'll think about it, the more you'll want it. Okay. Because I know I have a really, really good offer. Okay. Right now, especially with the pandemic, Clients need confidence. They need to be confident about what you're selling. They're looking for confidence. The main thing you're selling right now, it's not an app or a service or a product. It's confidence. It's the feeling that everything is good. Everything is going to be okay. Hope, hopeful. You're hopeful. You're optimistic. That's what makes markets work. It's not the financials. It's the positivity. It's, being, it's, it's people being excited and wanting to start new businesses. That's what makes people happy. That's what makes people buy. So you need to create confidence in your deal. How do you actually do that? First of all, leverage existing implicit commitments that you have that you're just not explicitly stating. Now, that's a very complicated sentence. So let me break it down. What I mean is if you sell a product, you sell, I don't know, a service, coaching, consulting, insurance, whatever it is, and you know that if somebody had a terrible experience, it just did, it did not work in any way, you're going to refund them. You're going to give them their money back. You just know that you're going to do that because you're a very, uh, a very loving and, and trusting person. Then why are you not telling that to your prospects? Why are you not explicitly telling them, I guarantee you I'm going to make it work. If you're not happy for any reason, let me know and I'll give you your money back. Or if you already guarantee them something, like with Primatica, we guarantee you minimum 50 leads in the first month. We always guaranteed that, but we never thought to include it in the actual commitments. What We would always just do it implicitly. We would, anytime a client didn't have good results, we wouldn't ask them to pay again. We would just give them more service for free because we wanted to get them to a good result. Once we put that guarantee into the actual contract, into the actual marketing, and we put it on top, people started buying a lot more because you're projecting confidence. You say, I guarantee you it's going to work. You need to be able to paint that exciting picture. You need to be able to, to, to feel so good about your offer that you don't need to pressure the client because you just know that they're going to come back because there's no better offer than that. 
So make your deal so good. Make it so good that you want to scream it to the world. You want to tell everybody, look at my deal. It's the best deal in the world. If you cannot comfortably say, I have the best service. It is the best product. It is the best investment you can make. You cannot lose money with us. You can only win. I guarantee you, we'll take care of you. This is exactly what you need. If you cannot say that with the same confidence and certainty that I'm saying right now to a prospect, you need to go back and ask yourself, what do I need to change about my mindset or about the offer so that I'm able to scream at it confidently because that's what's going to help you sell, okay? I'm not a great salesperson, but I get very good sales. The reason is, I project confidence, which makes people confident in me. So whatever you need to do to be confident, whether you're an analytical type and you need to have the numbers in front of your face to be confident, or whether you need to have the social part, whether you're a more emotional type like me and you just need to really feel good about your service, whatever it is, just make sure you're confident and it's going to make, it's going to actually show up in your, in your sales. It's going to make your sales boom. Okay, no, no need for tactics, no need for follow crazy follow-up ideas. Be confident and everything will usually work itself out. If you're extremely confident about your offer, you'll usually do the right things automatically. You'll talk with the right tone, the right enthusiasm, you'll follow up a lot, you'll pressure just at the right times because you feel good. The, most of the reasons why pe salespeople act weird and do bad stuff or don't follow up is just because they don't really, really believe and they're not really excited about their product. Next up, promote, promote, promote. If you look at what I'm doing here, you'll see I have my Primatica hat. I have my Primatica background. You need to invest in your promotion. Promote your product. Scream it to the world. Spend your last dollar on retargeting. Whether you're in sales or whether you're a business owner, set up a campaign. Put $5 a day on Facebook advertising. And make sure that every single person that visited your website gets to see your ads again and again and again. You need to be your biggest cheerleader, okay? Promotion is key. If I don't know you and I'm not thinking about you, I'm not going to do business with you. The more people that know you and think about you, the more lucky you're going to get. Okay, next up, expand, hyper-focus, and then expand again. The reason we were able to grow so fast is because what we did was we started off with a very broad audience with a lot of ideas, a lot of offers, and a lot of marketing content. And we tried a lot of different things. We tried about a thousand different email types, combinations, pictures, audiences, until we find the exact audience that reacts to the exact message, to the exact offer that works the best. Th that was marketing agencies with a very specific message. That's what worked for us best. So what we did was we put that marketing on steroids. We focused, we went from very broad to focusing on one very specific niche, dominating it. And then once we've dominated it, we expand it again to a larger market. So you want to start very big, find your perfect audience, and then expand again once you've, you've, you've managed to maximize that audience. Next up, create an effective partnership. I don't care who you are. There's things you're good at. There's things you're terrible at. Okay, I'm terrible at management. I'm terrible at, uh, at managing people, at managing financial money and stuff. I'm very good at, at, at marketing and pr promoting things. So what I did was I found a partner who I trust, who I love very dearly, that whatever I'm bad at, he's extremely good at. And that created a beautiful uh, situation where no matter what, everything is always okay in the company because whatever I'm bad at, he's going to be good at. Whatever I'm bad at, I'm good at, he's going to be bad at. So, so there's no point in trying to work on what you suck at. Work on what you're good at and find somebody that compliments you, just like a life partner. And that way you're going to have a very healthy business. Most people fail, not because they didn't try hard enough, but because they didn't account for the things they're bad at. And they tried to get good at the things they're bad at instead of just finding somebody to do it for them. Uh, we got only one or two more. Yeah, we got just two more. So next up, systemize everything, okay? Uh, Every step of the process, we always try to systemize everything that we were doing. Okay, it's very critical uh, that you try to systemize everything that you're doing. And the reason is that if you don't systemize things, when your business gets bigger, when you sell more, it's going to become harder and harder to grow. So we always try to systemize everything. We systemize our marketing process by ha hiring a VA, a virtual assistant, to help us reply to emails and, and people who are interested and teaching them how to do that. 
we to qualify prospects, we built a really long and beautiful form that people have to fill if they want to schedule a call with us. To to automate our sales process, I just I sold again every sales call for you guys. It's probably very similar. You repeat the same things again and again and again. So what I did was I created a demo video that basically sells my product and goes through the same 20 minutes that I go through every single call. It just explains it very quick, quickly. So by the time I'm on a call with somebody, I can just go to, to straight to closing because he's already watched the video. So instead of doing 10 sales calls, that each, each sales call is 40 minutes and just repeat the same thing again and again and again and again, do 20 minute sales calls and send them a 20 minute video that explains everything that you would explain to everybody on the same sell call again and again and again anyway. And that way you can control and give your best content automatically. Uh, we automated our hiring process by creating automatic forms, automatic interviews, and we've even automated our onboarding process. So again, I wish I had more time to discuss this. You can always search me up on Google, just write Primatica. Uh, we have a lot of lectures about these things, uh, but, but yeah, that's what I can do. One last thing, final principle, the golden principle, okay? Always hire great people, okay? The secret to success, one of the biggest secrets is to hire great people. This is the picture of our team. We have 27 people from all across the world. We live in a global economy, okay? Anybody right now, you can go to Google. You can find people that speak English from anywhere in the world. You can hire somebody to work for you eight hours a day for $300 and they'll say thank you, $300 a month. And they'll say thank you at the end of the month, okay? We've hired everything from a marketing manager, salespeople, developers, a CTO, organizational manager, everything you can think of, customer service. We've hired everything remotely okay every single employee we have we found in places such as facebook upwork linkedin freelancer there's a lot of people right now because of covid that are looking for work and you need to hire internationally you need to look for a lot of people and remember even if you're a teacher even if you're a salesperson there's always things you can hire for there's always something you need help with and if you can find it for the right price it's going to change your life. Don't be proud. Don't think I can do everything by myself. That's stupid, okay? You want to have people helping you so you can live the life of your dreams and have other people work for you. It's actually going to be bigger and more successful, and you're going to help more people along the way, okay? So it feels good to pay the salary of a lot of people, okay? It feels good to have a big business that can actually support me and my dreams, okay? So the way you want to do it, you, you, you find people, qualify them very hard, so you want... Again, I, I wish I could go really into it. It's it's really a huge, huge, huge part of our uh, of what I wanted to talk to you through. But but unfortunately, I don't have the time, and I want to take some Q and A. So summary: Remember, guys, you have all the tools in the world. There's an infinite amount of people, infinite amount of opportunities. We're all connected, and your next breakthrough could be the next idea. Always rely on people. Always have people around you to help you hire people, get partners. Stay focused on your goals. Don't get bogged down by, by the problems you have right now. Focus on the future and you can do it, okay? So if you guys want to learn more about Primatica, just Google Primatica. You'll see us. Uh, we have a ton of great reviews. We work with any, everything from small businesses to Inc. 5000 companies. And uh, again, we're going, going to amazing places and we'd like to take you along with us. We want to help you get to your target audience, generate hundreds of leads every month. And uh, again, we'll, very excited, very happy to help to help you and help you grow your business. We have the best offer on the planet for marketing. So thank you. And uh, yeah, we can, if it's okay, Dennis, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. available for Q&A. <laughs>